Okay, for this week's premiere tutorial, I want to introduce you to importing an image sequence, which is the best way to import stop motion footage. If you've taken a series of photographs all in a row and they're all, they all have a, a numerical sequence one after the other, you can import them all together rather than dragging and dropping individual JPEGs. This will take a whole lot longer than an image sequence, which um, expedites the process of importing a, a number of photos that are all in sequence already. Uh, then I'm going to show you keyframing, some of the, uh, the effects, and also using masking in order to kind of collage together um, different clips to overlay them and then collage them together. So what I'm going to do here, this is the last demo I open. I'm just going to double click in the empty space here in my project um, my project panel. And I have here a sequence of images. These are actually from my daughter's computer. And they all, we've deleted some of them, so it's not going not to be able to import all of them. But that doesn't matter necessarily. Um, for example, here, six, 65 to 68, that's a good example. So they're in sequence, but any time that the numerical sequence is broken, that's where the image sequence will end. So for example, I'm going to select this image. And if I go to import or options here, and I click image sequence, what that will do is that will not only import this image, but it will import all of the images that are in, that are in numerical order as a video file. So now it's importing it. And here I have it. Let's see how long this is a minute and 29 seconds. So here I have, this is not a single JPEG image now, it is an image sequence. And it has a particular frame rate that we can manipulate and change. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click and I'm going to create a new sequence from clip. There's another way I can do this instead of right clicking, I can just have this selected and go file new, sequence from clip. Because this is a sequence in our timeline, it's named ORCID1 based off of the first image that I pulled into the timeline. And in this case, I'm going to create a new sequence. So I'm not going to delete this sequence. I'd like to keep it, but I can have a new sequence from clip. And what that will do is, oh, this is only one second long. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like if I press play here. Okay. There's a sh very short, so I thought it was a minute long, it's a second long, so we must have deleted another, um, she must have deleted another image from her computer, I mean from her camera. Okay, anyway, this is just to illustrate how to import an image sequence, and you can see here, I've imported this, and now my, using this create sequence from clip, this will, uh, you can do this with any of your footage, you can choose one of them and and create the sequence from the clip and it will adopt whatever those sequence param those, that parameters are from that particular piece of footage. If I did, just for example, create just a new sequence, it's gonna ask me, well, what are the settings that you want that sequence to be at? So I might go down to, I might, um, you know, there's so many here. I could say HDV 720 at 24 frames per second or HDV 1080 at 24. Um, I think I have your project setting should be 720. And this could be 30 or 24. Uh, this is how many frames per second. Let me just go ahead and say, click that. And if I go to drag and drop this into the timeline now, um, it's this, uh, this um, particular clip is a lot bigger than the frame that we've chosen, the, the size of the of the frame for this particular sequence that we've chosen. So this is just two different ways to do it. I can go here and I can go to scale and pull this back. Also, you can see the aspect ratio is different here. Okay, so what I can do is um, for this sequence here, I mean, for this particular piece of footage, if I right click on the frame rate, I can say modify and interpret footage. If I do that, I can assume a different frame rate. So in this case, maybe I'll assume a frame rate instead of at 29.97 frames per second. That's how many images per second we're running through. 
and it has that strange decimal percentage just due to the, the material nature of video versus film. So film is a series of, literally a series of still photographs that are taken on a celluloid reel. And so those have a 24 or 18 or, or more frames per second, which is a round number. And here, because of the way that video runs, where it's a uh, sequence of like cathode rays on a screen, firing um, that, that's why it assumes a strange frame rate but let me go ahead and change this to something like 12 frames per second i'll say okay and let's drag this now into the timeline i want to make sure this button is clicked here and so i'm able to drag and drop there we are right so this is the first one which is very fast um, let's see what this looks like at about half the rate And let's try, let's make this even, let's modify this even further. Interpret footage here and assume the frame rate of four frames per second. This is going to help you determine the pacing and the feel of a stop motion. I mean, granted, these are all random photographs, but if you're creating a stop motion where you are Take it, making incremental changes to your scene um, with each photograph that you take. Then when you bring it in here, you can adjust the aesthetic of it by changing the frame rate, how fast or how slow we're going through all of those images. Okay. I can also do it directly in the timeline. So that's changing the frame rate of the footage piece. I can also do it directly in the timeline by clicking on one of these, um, by clicking on one of the clips in our timeline. And I can go and say um, speed duration. And this is another way that I can increase the duration or the speed. So I can, let's say, make this speed 25% of, of the uh, original clip. And now this will slow down. Speed of this clip. So that's another way I can adjust the, um, the speed of the uh, sequence of my images in order. Okay, something else I wanted to show you briefly was how to keyframe. And what keyframing is, is um, setting at a particular time, particular frame and time marker in our sequence here um, for something to happen within our effects, for example. And the way I do it, so any of these parameters can change over time. And we do that with keyframing. This little stopwatch here will enable that keyframing. So for example, let's say for this clip, which I have selected, I'm going to key the scale of this at the beginning of the clip at 100. And then I can go to the end of the clip uh, by using my arrows. I can jump down to the last frame of this clip. This is how I can um, kind of move through the timeline more uh, faster. If I click my left and right arrow, I will go frame by frame. Um, so, and then here, maybe I'll key this. And since this stopwatch means that any adjustments I make wherever the playhead is for that particular attribute, uh, it will um, record that as a key. And I can also manually add a key here. So if I go and say, I want this to have a scale of zero at the end. Now what I have is I've, you can see them here. I have two keys. I have one at the beginning and one at the end of this clip. And now you can see that the scale, you can see it here and also in the image here, the scale is getting smaller and smaller by the end. So you can do that with any of these parameters, uh, attributes. For example, I can also with this clip maybe, let me scale this down. And maybe I'll change its position. So I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna hit the up arrow to jump to the beginning of this frame. 
And let's move the position of this outside of our field of view. Key that, and now hit the down arrow, jump to the end of this clip, and then manually move this over to the other side. If I hit shift on my keyboard, I can move it faster. Let's see, it will show back up. Where are you? And I think my problem is that I want to just be one frame in so I can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, there we are. So we'll go to here and I'll key that. So you see here we have this key and this key. I can jump between them and you can see here how the value has changed. So let's see what this looks like now. That This little clip goes across the screen. Okay, because we've keyed those positions. So what this does, what any kind of computer editing software does when we're using kind of keyframes here is to um, interpret between those two keys. So it says, okay, we're at this key at this time, this key at this time. Now let's um, interpret what that motion will be between those two keys. So you can do that with any of these, um, with any of the attributes here. We also have effects and all of those effects have the ability to be keyed as well. So let's go to effects here. We have video effects, so let's open this up. And just for fun, we'll use one here. Um, let's just look at one of the distort. Let's use distort, let's use swirl. So if I grab this effect, and again, it's down here, we have our project window, and next to that is effects. This little, these um, arrows here will, show you all of the nested tabs that are within this window. Go to effects here, and then I've just found one twirl, so I'm just gonna drop this, um, drag and drop it right on top of my clip. Now here in my effects controls, right, I have my motion, all of my standard attributes, motion, opacity, and now I have this new one called twirl. And twirl will probably distort this by swirling it, so let's just, uh, Let's see, let's increase the angle here. And now you see I have this strange warping. So I can set this at zero. And again, I can key this, these attributes here. I can set this for an angle of zero and by the end of it for an angle of 360. So one time around, a change to one time around. And now we can preview this. Um, hopefully we can. So you'll see this red bar. This means that you might not be able to preview it in real time. It's something that needs to be rendered. But if we scrub through, we might see the effect of that twirl. And it's not until you export this that you'll be able to really see what's happening. And or we can click here and go to clip. Let's see, where is it? Sequence and say render selection. Now it will process that uh, effect onto the clip. Might take a little time, but now we should be able to view in real time the, that particular effect. Right, and now you can kind of see it. Although I know there are more images in here than just those four. And if I do anything to this now, right, if I change the speed of it or something, I'm going to probably have to re-render. Okay, so there's tons of effects. If this is something that you're interested in that you want to dive into is a lot of them are kind of cheesy um, and just like using the filters in Photoshop are, but maybe you can use something here to your advantage um, when you're thinking about your sequence. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you, one of the last things is how to mask. And 
Um, this is a creepy image of my daughter. Um, let's see, let me go back to my project here and um, my project folder, although now this is a different project. This is my project. Uh, okay, Orchid. Let's go here in order to show you how to mask. Let's go to this original demo. Oh, this is my project. Forget it. We'll go back to sequence two. I'm not sure why this is opened and not the project that we opened initially. Not quite sure. Okay. Instead, what I'll do, let me go ahead and, and um, just duplicate this for a second. I'm going to copy and paste, just command C, command V. I'm going to place this over. Um, I'm going to place this second copy as a video on video channel two. And then I have video channel one below it. And so now if I have any of these clips selected, if I go here um, into my effects controls and go to opacity and click the pen tool, I can draw a mask on my frame. And what this will do, and you can either, there's a lot of options here once you create the mask, but you, what you're basically doing, and you can adjust it after the fact, right? If I want to make sure that it's, um, I have to drop it on the frame, but I can make sure that it's covering the corners here if, I, if need be. Um, so what this does is this creates a kind of a window from which we are viewing that part of that particular clip. So it's masking off the clip within a particular shape. And this is useful. Let's say you have, you're setting up a tripod and you're setting up a scene and you want to maintain an illusion that something um, is disjointed or happening in the scene, um, you can kind of do You'll have your, a shot of your scene and then a shot of the action in the scene and then you can mask off the part of the action that you want to appear within the scene and get rid of the part of the action that you don't want to have appear in the scene. So it can almost appear as if there's nothing there and something there. It, yeah, even if you have, you know, you're just able to kind of mask or erase things from your image. And if you have the same, the background image without any action in it, and then the action comes in, you can mask off what part of that action appears within the scene. Okay, we can also go here and say, um, we want to invert it. So this mask is actually um, a hole through this layer or through this channel within this clip to the next to the clip below it. Um, I can feather the edge here so that it's a softer transition between those two. Right, so we're feathering it around that edge. And, um, right, and so I'm just clicked off of it so you could see what that looks like, that feather. Um, and then I can also do an opacity on the mask, right, so that the mask is more or less transparent to the, to the clip below it, et cetera, okay? So that's a way that you might want to layer and start to and collage different video pieces together. You can also key the mask's path, okay? But this is something that starts to become maybe a little more advanced, but you can dive into that if it's something that interests you. Okay, so the last thing we wanna do now is file, export, our media, And I believe we went over this already on last week, but we'll do it again here. And let's see, I might want to, I have to actually click within my timeline for it to export, export media. So it understands I want to export this sequence. There we are. And now again, you want to, this is a strange size image. I would prefer to, be working with this sequence here where I have my standard 1280 by 720. Let's export this media. And again, here I can match, I can match the settings. 
Doesn't matter so much what my frame rate is. That's something you can mess around with. Um, but you want to have your output name if you click on it. It'll tell you where you're saving your particular file, that it's an MP4 file. So if I was going to export this, I'm not going to, but I'd say project three final or something like this. Um, and then you just, we know we don't have any audio this project, but you export the video and you hit export. And then it will save that video file. Now, um, if anybody needs help creating a Vimeo or a YouTube account, it's very simple. I would really recommend using Vimeo. I use Vimeo for all my own, you know, moving image work um, for all my tutorials. For you guys, I use YouTube. Either one's fine with me. I prefer Vimeo for sharing work because there's no ads at the end. And it's also a platform that more creatives use to showcase their work than YouTube, which is a whole, you know, cacophony of different types of media. So if you need help with that, reach out and send me an email. I could then maybe make a very fast tutorial on how to uh, open a Vimeo or a YouTube account and how to upload um, how to upload these uh, videos to, to that account. What I will show you really quickly is um, let me go to our Canvas page and how I would like you to upload these to Canvas. Um, let me go ahead and just quickly create our week nine module. And very quickly create our discussion board, our critique discussion. Which is a format you're familiar with, right? You're familiar with the critique discussions, but for this particular project, and um, I'm gonna go to my YouTube page here. Um, let me go to my channel here and find just my premiere tutorial from last week will be fine. And if I go to the share button, I can click embed and I'll copy this code And I'll reply to the critique forum and I will insert and embed that code. And what that will do is that will share your project to the critique board. If you have anything you want to say, if you have a title for your project, go ahead and put it below or above. Um, I would prefer not to have lengthy descriptions of the work or what your intentions were when you share. Let's just share what your final product uh, turns out to be, and you can hit post.